Hello everyone and welcome to another month of Q&As. That's questions and answers, where you ask questions and we will do our best to give you... I thought it was questions and an avocados. <laughs> Everyone's favorite series. Questions and avocados, where you ask questions and we ignore them completely and eat avocados on camera for 25 minutes. Uh, this is for the month of September, so you've just finished the August vlogs, got through ChefCon, some of the most interesting stuff of the year I thought was really fun, and now we're moving into September. As a reminder, these are filmed after the fact. Mail video has actually been doing a pretty good job yep. lately, lately of being filmed when they should. Q&As can't be, because... We'd, we'd have to record three Q&As, and who would leave the questions on the ones that didn't were get fun? released yet? Exactly. Oh. That's how it works. All right. So first question is from Josh Wood, and Josh asks, did you ever write each other love letters? And uh, Josh's question actually comes from, um, uh, they were watching Tulip, and in the Tulip Let's Play, uh, there's apparently a part where we're looking at one of the love letters that Chu is writing and you said, well, you did a better job than that. So Josh was wondering if we had other communication outside of Skype and, you know, phone calls. And we did. We sent a lot of letters. We did. Um, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm sure if we went back and read them now, they'd probably be like super gag worthy and, and terrible. Yeah. Um, but you were sweet. But I, yeah, it was, it was sweet, and you were sweet. It, it's one of those things that at the beginning of any relationship, everyone... Twitter pated. Yeah. Every, every All of your friends don't want to be around you because you're disgusting and gross. But eventually that fades, and then, and then it gets better. Um, but yeah, we actually did. We wrote each other pretty often. Uh, we sent each other gifts. We sent each other um, other things, because you sent me, like, homemade cookies on multiple occasions. It was good stuff, and I'm sure some of that's on the vlog, because like the last two years of my college life is on the vlog, and we were we only got together about halfway through freshman year, so there's only about a year and a half. Of course, that's probably the the prime time stuff for the sappy for the sappy stuff. I don't I don't think I would have probably shared any love letters on the vlog anyway. That would have been personal stuff between me and you, but yeah, we did. We totally did. We were disgusting. Uh, <laughs> The next question is from Bloops64. Would you consider doing sponsored videos or mentioning Loot Crate, Audible, Crunchyroll, etc.? Um, I have talked about this a little bit in the past, I think maybe earlier this year. Um, and, and basically the answer is, we would not be opposed to doing sponsored videos if it was something that we felt strongly about sponsoring. Um, otherwise, we have been fortunate enough to not need that. There's YouTubers that, you know, for this reason or that reason, they kind of have to do those sorts of things. So if you're ever watching a video and someone's like, by the way, today's video is sponsored by Audible, audible.com. You can listen to a podcast or a book. It's great. Sign up under my code, you know, fun, fun guy 42. Um, so that happens a good bit. And uh, I, I really, I always wonder like who signs up or audible.com under fun guy 42 I'm sure it I guess it probably happens um, we don't do those sorts of things because I I really I don't want to say I hate them but I I do hate them but like I I don't hate anyone that does it because I understand that it's difficult but I'm just very thankful that we're not in a position where we absolutely have to do that so if I can avoid doing that I will um, I would not however would not be opposed to sponsoring stuff that <laughs> Um, I'm super cool with like if Bojangles if Bojangles was like hey we'll give you the new chicken sandwich we have if you do a video on it well I was thinking like we'll give you like you know I don't know if like a $500 Bojangles gift card if you wear the Bojangles shirt in your videos I mean I would still be I would still want to be like super upfront and also probably very goofy about the whole thing like start vlogs and be like Hello and welcome to Bojangles vlog where I wear this shirt and I get a lot of Bojangles and it's delicious. Like I would do something like that because I really like Bojangles, you know? I would do the same thing if it was like Grandma Utz's potato chips, which seems weird. I don't think they do brand deals, but you know. You really like those potato I chips. Yeah, it's something I really, you know, enjoy, but it would be really hard if... It would have to be something you liked and believed in. Basically, Because yeah. um, 
I just had a video come out where I talk about the paints I use, which is golden acrylics. Yeah. And someone said, are you sponsored? And I was like, no, I just love them. Yeah. And that's, an, I mean, that would be something for you if golden reached out and was like, yeah, we'd love to sponsor your videos. That's something Mal would probably do because Mal is already speaking their praises on her channel in the first place. So if it was something we felt strongly about and yeah. I'm like, yeah, I could get behind that. And the terms weren't ridiculous and I could also, you know, for one, be upfront and open with people about the fact that that's happening and they didn't mind me being a little goofy about the whole thing, then I would, I would probably do it. But you probably, at least hopefully, won't hear us, you know, telling you to get a loot crate on the channel anytime soon. Uh, next question is from KDevil24. Fobby's of Orange is 10 years old now. What are you still really proud of and what would you have done differently? How do you feel about that first few words there? It's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's kind of strange because like, part of me is like, wow, 10 years, but also, at least for me personally, a lot has happened in 10 years. Like 10 years ago when Fobbies or Borns was going on, which some of you have no idea what I'm even saying. So let me slow down and back up a little bit. Uh, a long time ago, uh, I w worked with some friends on a live radio show, online radio, uh, for Fobbies or Borns, which was a... Goofy. A goofy reimagining of Earthbound. And um, we, we wrote up these scripts and we got online and did it on internet radio, me and a few friends, and we voiced different characters, and I played the role of Ness. And some other characters, although I could not tell you who Tracy. they were. Tracy, Ness's little sister, um, Gerard... Uh, what's Montague. His name? Montague, the construction worker. Is it Montague? Is it? I don't know. I'm the construction worker or whatever. Anyway, so we did this thing, and... Um, we did it, I think, every single week. It was every Saturday every, night. Every Saturday, about every Saturday night, um, 10 years ago, when I was a freshman in college. And uh, so it, la it lasted about a year, and by the time the finale rolled around, it was a fairly big thing, especially not only in the Earthbound community, but also within just fan communities in general. It was something that other fan communities looked at and was like, wow, that's really cool. We should do a thing, you know, like that. So it was fun. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I, I'm going to be really honest. I have never actually listened to it. <laughs> we did it when we did it. We did it live, um, mostly. Well, no, all the all of them are live. The only thing it's not live is the finale. Okay. Finale is the only thing that was pre-recorded, just because there was so much going on. Um, and there's a lot of there's a lot of problems with doing it live ten years ago on because some of us had crappy internet. And like some people drop out or their voice isn't clear because it was being like all captured from Skype and being routed into internet radio from Skype and Skype would drop out and there'd be a lot of weird problems. So like, are there things that I, you know, I regret about it? I kind of regret it being live. It, there was an element that was fun because there was people in a, in a chat room. It was kind of like early Twitch in a way, except just audio. So there's, you know, 70 people or something hang out in the chat room listening to this thing being performed live and, and corresponding with it. And like, that was neat. But there was also a lot of problems just from the fact that we did it live, which wasn't super great. But like, I haven't actually gone back and listened to it. Unfortunately, you know, I, it just, it takes a lot of time and I've listened to things here and here and there. And um, sometimes at conventions, people will make references to it. And some of them I get, some of them I don't. But it's cool. I, th I think that's one of my favorite things about the project as a whole, is that 10 years later, and in the realm of the things I've done, it's such a tiny blip. I mean, everyone that knows me now doesn't know me for Fobbies or Borange. Everyone that knows me now knows me for Steven Vlog or Steven Plays. Um, so whenever people make references to, like, you know, the trout fish or something, you know? Say Daddy. Yeah, we actually, well, we made, someone made a card recently in an episode of A Thousand Blank White Cards that referenced Fobbies or Borange, and me and Chaz had a little back and forth. So, like, it's, we st we still know about it. Um, Chaz was in it also, obviously. Um, we still know about it. We still make little references here and there um, for longtime viewers, longtime fans of the show. It's still available. If you've never heard it and you're interested in listening to it, it, I th I'm pretty sure it's still available on fobbiesorborange.com. It's all archived there. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's old. It's It has fond memories because I started tuning in, and somewhere in there is when you and I started talking. Mm-hmm. 
And the show reflects that, <laughs> which is ridiculous. And, and it's not very professional because it was being written by 18 year olds, 18 year olds, 19 year olds. Um, but it was, you know, it, we, we put ourselves into the show. And um, Mao played the role of like the white sesame seed in the desert as a cameo. And then we ended up started dating. So then in the show, Ness has like this romantic relationship with the white sesame seed, which doesn't make any sense, but like that there was elements of us within the show. So yeah. it's bizarre. It's really long. I don't know how long it is. It's probably like 15 hours long to listen to it. But sometimes um, I've had people tell me that, you know, just to relive it, they'll, if they're going to be like on a long driving trip or if they're going to be on a plane for a while, they'll load it up onto their, their phones and listen to it. So it can still be enjoyed. Just go into it with the knowledge of this was done over a decade ago. And it's not, it's not the Some best. Some things have changed. It's not the best thing we've ever done. Some things have changed. I will say that there are definitely some things in there that are not probably as politically correct as they should be. Um, just because I hate to be like, it was a different time. Because I feel bad about some of the things that we, we say in the show. But it was a different time. I feel bad about it. But You just, were younger. We were younger. It so was keep, 10 years ago. Keep that in mind when you go into it. Um, nothing too terrible, but... Some stuff that we probably wouldn't do or say uh, yeah, today. For sure. Um, but it's still it's still probably one of the biggest early projects I was a part of, so it has a special place in my heart. And if you if you choose to listen to it, I hope you enjoy it. Just go into it knowing that it is like 15 hours long. So you better have some some free time or a really long flight. Uh, the next question is from Parker Doss. It says, How active are you on your Patreon Discord server? And uh, Parker's qu question was basically like, you know, if I become a patron at, at that tier to get the uh, Discord access, will I be able to talk to you? And I, I think that we do a pretty good job. Um, me and Mal are both on there basically every day. Yeah. Um, I'm always checking on it. I'm always loading it up and talking with people. I will say that there's a really great community of people on there that, like, they... I don't know how to word it, but they don't require us to be there. There's people that I've formed, you know, these friendly relationships, you know, friendships, acquaintances, acquaintanceships with each other, and they operate just fine without us, but we do try and be there um, basically every single day. Yeah. And if people have a question for one of us, um, one of the, the things you can do on Discord is you can tag someone. tag someone, like you would on Twitter, and it pops up on our thing and lets us know, and we get back with them pretty quick, so... Yeah, I mean... We have it on our phones, and sometimes when we're out and bored somewhere, we'll yeah. jump on Discord. Or... No, yeah, we do. Um, honestly, I think that the the current people that are on Discord, on our Patreon Discord, are the most um, qualified to, to tell you. So, if you're watching right now and you're on our Discord, you can talk in the, in the comments. And be like, hey, I'm on there. Yep, they're there. <laughs> I don't know what you'd say, but um, it's not its not like a barren wasteland where we're, where we're never there. We're basically there and try to be uh, every single day. Um, the next question is from Kiyomori uh, Takasu. Mal, do the people who buy your original canvases keep in touch with you or give you updates? Um, I'd say I, maybe like 50-50. Like for the most part, people at least leave me eBay feedback so I know it got there. Yeah. And um, sometimes I'm... Okay, every time I send out a painting, I worry about it. Will it get there okay? Will there be something wrong? Did eBay... Or, um, did FedEx punch a hole in it? None of that's ever happens. There's no wood around. But um, I'm always super paranoid about that. And people do send me pictures. I've gotten pictures of the originals hanging in people's houses. Um, there's one in a video game store somewhere, which is really cool. Um... Which, by the way, I don't know if that person watches like all of our stuff or watches even my stuff because they're watching your stuff. If you're watching, um, maybe some at some point we'll get a chance to stop by that store. That would be. Really it's not awesome. in this state, but we know where it went because yeah. we had to ship it there. And I just think it'd be really neat to to be able to to show up there one day and be like, "That's your painting. That's so cool." Um. Um. But yeah, I love getting the pictures of it, and I mean the same with the the phone cases and posters off mm -hmm. Redbubble. People send me images of that all the time too, and that's also great. Yeah. Um, yeah, just as a just as a general rule, if you 
get something from Mal, especially if it's a canvas. If it's if it's a canvas, definitely please do this. Like, take a picture of it hanging in your house. Mal loves to see where these paintings wind up because each one of these are, are you know, kind of like her children. She only you can only work on like what twenty to twenty five paintings in a year. That's all the more time that Mal has. So each one of these paintings, Mal's pouring her heart and soul and time into. And when she ships them up in a box, it's kind of sad, you know, because yeah. you're saying goodbye to something that you spent so much, in the world. so much time with. So if you if you are someone who was lucky enough to get one of Mal's originals, definitely take a picture of its final resting place and send it to Mal on Twitter because she loves to see them. I might retweet it. Probably I will. <laughs> yeah, Mal, a lot of times Mal retweet that. And Mal also retweet um, a lot of like product shots and stuff. Like if you guys get... A notebook or a phone case and you're like holy crap this is really cool or you fill your couch with pillows yeah which That's... someone did that recently and it's such a cool picture it's such it's a cool a picture yeah yeah no it has mm -hmm. so yeah if you if you get some of these like products or something from Mao, um take a picture and show show her you know because she loves to see that sort of thing so she would appreciate it uh all right the next question is from yoshi the kid 18 how do you decide which console to purchase a multi-platform game for? So if a game comes out on the PlayStation and also the Xbox, how do you know which one to buy? Uh, the answer is in 99% of cases, just buy it on PC. Uh, sometimes it's not available on PC, although generally if it's not available on PC, it's a console exclusive. You know, you can't buy Uncharted on your computer. So you're buying it for PS4. There's probably... Is there... There's probably games that aren't on PC that are on multi-platform. I mean, I can't think of any examples, I mean, but... I will say that there are some PC ports that are just bad. There are, I mean, games these days are, by and large, created for consoles, and then sometimes they get ported over to PC, and it's like, ew, what happened here? Why does this crash every five minutes? And the company's like, yeah, we're not going to do any patches, sorry. So, like, sometimes that sort of thing happens, um, but for the most part, PC, and it's just because it runs better, and this is no, I don't mean that to be like PC Master Race thing, or I'm saying, you know, get down, console peasants, it's not like that at all, um, but it does usually run better. There's games that across all consoles run at 30 FPS, you play them on the computer, they run at 60 FPS, you know, like the Walking Dead series. Yeah. We did that on the computer. We could have easily played that on console but it ran better. It looked a little better, not probably much better, but it ran at 60 FPS, which is something that it wouldn't have done anywhere else. Um, however, if I am going to play a console game, um, like if it has to be console, it's not going to be PC, then a lot of times it comes down to additional features, if that's a thing. Sometimes it's a thing. Now, nowadays, not so much. Which one looks maybe better? Um, in the early days when Xbox One and PS4 had just come out, um, PS4 actually was more powerful by a little bit. It was the difference between running at like 1080p and 900p, so I would have probably opted for that. But if they're truly the same, sometimes it'll just be a matter of controller choice. In which case, I go with Xbox. Sometimes, if I remember correctly, and you may have to correct me, when Skyrim came out, didn't it have problems on one system or the other because of memory or something? It did, although to be fair, I got it on the day of release far before we knew those problems were around. Yeah. Um, actually, Skyrim was a weird beast because I got Skyrim on PC. Some of you that have been around for a long time may know if you've watched through some of Skyrim. Skyrim started on the computer. And the first, like, I don't know, 12 episodes or something are on the PC, but then I started to run into problems because, to be fair, my computer really wasn't that powerful. It was not powerful enough to run Skyrim. At the time, yeah. Um, I was running on, you know, lower settings, which probably still looked better than the Xbox, but I was having, like, game slowdown and all sorts of junk. And then I ended, I had to play through the game again to get it back up to where I was a few hours in. And then I just started on Xbox and I played through mostly the entire LP at that point with Xbox. Um, and I chose Xbox over PS3 probably at that point. Well, actually, I don't think I had a PS3 at that point, but I probably still would have chosen Xbox because I've always liked the controller more. Some people really like the Sony controller. Some people like the Xbox controller. I really like the feel of the Xbox controller in my hand. So if I'm given that option, I normally go Xbox. I mean, you have big hands. like I do. I have really large hands. And I, I also use the... Um, was it last Christmas 
I think Emil gave me the uh, Xbox One Elite controller. Yes. I use that for if it's a if it's a computer game that's not first person. You know, it wouldn't be advantageous to use a mouse. Then I I play with the Xbox controller. It's just so comfortable. I really really like that thing. Um, it's nice. I think I think that probably about answers the about about answers it. Mm -hmm. Too long didn't read computer console exclusive. And then, I don't know if there'd be any... Controller preference. Controller preference, you know. I mean, for if... What I generally tell other people, though, if they're interested in it, is like... do you, Is it an online game? Are your friends going to be playing? What console do they own it for? Done. You know? I don't really play online. I mean, the games I play online are on the computer. <laughs> uh, but if you were going to get it and you were trying to decide which system for it, like, what do your friends have? Are they going to be playing it? Then get it so you can play with them. Because multiplayer is fun. Anyway, uh, next question is from Nick502. How often is your video game collection list updated? Uh, it is updated. You, I think the best thing is to always assume it's up to date because it really is. Um, as soon as we get a new game, we update it. As soon as we finish doing a mail video, we update it. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, if you go to stephengeorge.com slash about slash collection, there is a, I'll put the link to that in the description. Um, there is a, a list of every single video game we own. So all the ones that you're seeing all around you, uh, those games are on that list. So whenever people send us in mail, if they want to send us a game and they don't want to send us a duplicate, you can check on that. Now, is there a possibility that when you send a game in the mail that someone else has sent a game in the mail, we might wind up with two of the same game? It's a possibility. But I don't, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I don't think that's ever happened. Like, even when mail has been behind and there's been, like, several months of mail, I don't think it's ever happened. So I wouldn't really worry about that too much. But yeah, it's up to date all the time. If, if you're looking at that list, whatever is on that list is what we have right this second. Uh, next question is from TV. When did you learn to ride bicycles and did you have any trouble? I was younger than first grade. So, five. Yeah. I don't know how old, though. My parents could probably tell me. Mm -hmm. um, because I know where it was I learned, like, what street I was on. Yeah. And my family moved um, in first grade, so then it was a new house, so I knew that. Um, I remember, like, with the training wheels, like, having my dad taking them off. And then he would like hold on to the back of the seat and like run with me. Mm -hmm. And I remember one time I was just pedaling way too fast and he couldn't keep up. So he just let go. And I went down the street and then I realized he wasn't there with me. And I didn't know how to turn around. And I think I turned around okay and came back. And then he kind of caught me because I couldn't stop. <laughs> um, I, I feel like I had a bicycle pretty early. Um, I'm not exactly sure when I, I had a had gotten my bicycle, but the the interesting thing with me and bicycles was that I had training wheels for like a ridiculously long amount of time. And I remember, you know, being super, super young, probably about that age, having the, the training wheels on my bike and it always felt like a safety blanket type thing. But as I rode my bike more and more and I got you know I kind of wore them in a little bit what happened is those training wheels which are on the bike like this started to actually bend up that's what happened to Carly so you're mm -hmm. like going around turns or whatever and the, the slowly they start to turn less into wheels and more into wings <laughs> and uh so you've got these really ridiculous looking training wheels like jutting out the side and um I, I remember, I think I was like, I was like seven, and I still had the training wheels, even though they weren't doing anything. And like, there was some time leading up to that where my dad was like, I'm gonna take your training wheels off. And I remember thinking, no, we can't do that, I'll die. And, and my parents having this conversation of like, they're not doing anything. <laughs> the, the wheels haven't touched the ground in a year. And I'm like, but they're helping. Like, so finally one day, I, I think it was like seven, 
or maybe eight, I don't know. Whatever age is like way too old for training wheels, where my dad finally took them off and it was like, oh wait, I can ride a bike. I guess I can ride a bike. Oh, or who would have thought? Um, yeah, so I, I, I probably learned how to ride pretty young. I don't have any, like you said, you have like a, like vivid memories of like I, your I mean, dad I pushing the- I can picture the, the street and the houses on the street and the trees on the street, like where the trees were, mm -hmm. because like our driveway was on the right side of the house and then there was a bunch of pine trees and then there was a split level house that was yellow with brown brick and there was a blue house further down with a big pine tree and I think I got to that blue house. How do you remember this sort of thing? It's really, like, it sticks out in my memory really well. I mean, I, could t I can tell you what street it was on um, just because I only lived in two spots know my basically my entire life um if if anyone wants to look at the street and if you have any particular interest in that you can search on google maps for um mica drive mica drive in little river uh and like you can see the street it's a real boring street it might have changed a lot oh now. it's changed um but that's where that's where i grew up that's where i was i was i wasn't born there but you know i was born in a hospital and lived in that house until I was like 10. Um, and that's, I mean, that's the street I learned how to ride my bike on. And you didn't I, really go off that street because it's like a major street at the end of it. Yeah, well, like yeah, it, yeah, it connects to, it connects to 17. Yeah. Which is a major highway that runs all the way to like mm -hmm. Virginia or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's, that's where I learned to ride my bike, but I, I don't have any particular memories about like, Oh, today we're gonna learn to ride the bike, or I'm holding the thing. I don't have any of that. I just remembered there was a bike. <laughs> I, that's all I can recall. I I remember when I got. I remember when I got my first bike that had gears, and thinking that that was like the future. I remember being excited about it, but I don't remember much about it other than one time I was pulling into Lindsay's driveway at her mom's house, mm -hmm. and I hit one of the brakes. And the cable from the handlebar snapped and flew. And the other one didn't work so well because it had been a used bike. So yeah. I didn't have brakes on it for a long time. That seems problematic. <laughs> yeah. it seems kind of hard to ride a bike without any brakes. Um, next question is from Shane Leith. Uh, some Stephen Play series show both your and Mal's perspective simultaneously. Why doesn't that happen more frequently? Uh, and Shane's example was the best example is Minecraft because it's some of the Minecraft series yeah. we showed... My screen and your screen. Either alternating or a split screen mm -hmm. where you could see both of us. Um, so yeah, we, we did some of that. They also had an example of GTA Online, and I have no recollection of that ever happening. Uh, there, there might have been something fairly recently on the computer stuff where someone recorded a clip. I think Alex did do that. Yeah. But um, the reason that doesn't happen very often is because, for one, there hasn't been a lot of stuff that we've done that really warranted it. A lot of stuff that Mal and I do, we're either taking turns or there is split screen. Um, and the the series that would benefit from it the most is obviously Grand Theft Auto Online. Being able to see perspective from someone else would be a big thing. But um, the people that have the power to actually do that, um, that either have capture devices or are familiar enough and know how to run Shadow Play or one of the capture softwares um yeah it's it's pretty few there's there's only a few people that in our group that could even do that and then you run into the actual problem you record this thing and you have this gigantic file that has to get to dan my advantage is that i can drive to dan <laughs> i can drive to dan and we're good dan here you go dan here you go dan done and dan could theoretically record his screen but then that's that's adding a lot of work for him. If there was if there was ever a time where I thought it was really, really warranted that we have two views, then I would ask him to record it, because he has all the equipment to do it too. But that would be it. And it would only because he would because Dan is Dan and he has his he would have his stuff available to him right there. But like if for example, if Alex recorded something, if he recorded an entire episode, or Jeff did, or Chaz did, like it would be great, but then we have several gigs of files that we have to get over the internet to Dan. And then again, it's a lot more effort for Dan, who's then got to sync that up and choose what to use and when and cut between stuff. So it adds more time on, on his end. Yeah. If, if I ever thought we needed it, I would do it. But as far as 
I know there's some series on YouTube where people play things like GTA Online and they're all recording their screen and it's like it cuts between eight different screens. That's nice, but uh, I'm pretty sure that, at least from the stuff I've seen, those people are physically in the same place. Yeah. And they're also, it's usually like huge companies worth of people that are making these sorts of videos because it's a lot of, it's a lot of effort. If, if, if GTA Online was a series that was bringing in a million views every single episode, then sure, we would try and do something like that. But until then, probably not. Um, otherwise, it'll come back when it needs to come back. If Mal and I do cover a Minecraft map again, I wouldn't write it off completely. If we do, then we'd probably do it like that again. And the final question from today is from Nick Mick... Ni I thought it said Nick McKickflip, but it's just Nick McFlip. IMO, you should IMO, you should change your name to throw in that kick because that makes it a lot cooler. Uh, what do you think of the Wisconsin cheese stereotype, and what are your favorite types of cheeses? Um, for the most part, most people I know from Wisconsin like cheese. Um, like, there's a there's a bunch of other stereotypes for Wisconsin I think are more prevalent. More prevalent and more rude than the cheese one. The cheese one's just like, you guys like cheese. And it's like, well, of course we do. I mean, like, there's normally a cheese platter at holidays. Mm -hmm. um, we go over to my dad and Rhonda's and they will put out a cheese and meat platter. Yeah. And crackers. Um, I mean, there's cheese stores everywhere. Like, I always take you to Simon's in Kakana. Yeah, which is a um, great place. Yeah, it is. It's the best. I like it. Um, but like, there's lots of cheese, and that's just what there is. What are, what are, and I'm gonna let you list them, because if I list them, then I'm, I'm being mean. Okay. What are the stereotypes for Wisconsin? Um, people love the Packers. They do. But I mean, they I really also, do. I also grew up around Green Bay. Like, Appleton's not far from Green Bay. Yeah, well, so, I mean, the Wisconsin as a whole likes the Packers. Yeah, but. And people that lived in Wisconsin to move away, they keep that. Yeah, they that do. Packer fire. But I mean, them. you've been around Lambeau and you've seen how people paint their houses and fences and yeah. mailboxes and everything. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's. I mean, you're not hurting anybody, so love what you want to love. But I don't. I don't quite get having that much admiration for a sports team. That said, I'm not a sports guy, so I, it's probably why I don't get it. Um, I mean, there's the drinking stereotype. I'm d all I get to do during this segment is nod. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like, especially beer. But I mean, from what I understand, being told from people older than me, like, every town used to have its own brewery. Hmm. And lots of towns still have them. Like, um, the first college I went to, Stevens Point, mm -hmm. they have a brewery. Yep. La Crosse has a brewery. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Eau Claire kind of has one. It's Slime and Kugels. Um, and Milwaukee's known for it because that's where Miller is from. And yep. I mean, there was a lot of beer. <laughs> I mean, I grew up with it, like, in the household, like, family at holidays, mm -hmm. my parents, and... Right next to the cheese. Yeah. While the Packers were on... Of course. ...on TV. Yeah. Um, as far as, as far as your favorite types of cheese? I think my most favorite is brie. Um, I really like it. <laughs> I've always really liked cheese. Just in general, um, and it wasn't until we started dating that I started really liking cheese. Well, I would say opening my palate to even new, more bizarre things types other of than cheese. American. That's rude. Whoa, whoa, very mean. Um, we grew up eating cheese other than American. Thank you very much. Um, I, 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 I prefer things that are probably a little more classic. Uh, cheddar is really good. I've always really liked cheddar and it wasn't until I started dating Mal that I could stomach sharp cheddar? Sharp Extra sharp cheddar? Cheddar. Cause the first I took you to the cheese factory in Kakana and they have samples and I was like, ooh, sharp cheddar, try this. And he could not get the taste out of his mouth for a while. And it he, was... You didn't like it then. No. It, it was... I've never tasted cheese that like drop kicked you in the throat. And that cheese did. I mean, it really did. It, that cheese was like, hi, I'm Cheddar. And I'm like, hi, Cheddar. It's like, follow me into this alley. <laughs> and I'm like, why are we going in here, Cheddar? It's like, come here. <laughs> it's like, you're going to remember this. And I'm like, oh, my God. So, yeah, I mean, it was 45 minutes later. And I'm like, I still taste this cheese. Um, but eventually, I, I get to the point where I really liked 
I really like that sort of thing. I've never had you try Limburger, have I? No, I don't think so. That's the B.O. stinky cheese. Yeah. That they wrap in like five layers of I've watched form. I've watched Looney Tunes, so I'm good. Okay. Um, yeah, at this point, I, I like pretty much most cheeses. I don't know if I have a favorite. Um, the thing you I... prefer Colby Jack. Colby Jack is what I, is Well, Colby Jack is what I grew up with. My yeah. parents always bought Colby Jack, and we put Colby Jack on sandwiches and stuff. Um, pr- provolone is barely a cheese. Uh, provolone is like the default. Provolone is what you put on a sandwich to say that you put cheese on it. But it's good. I mean, I like it. It's just there are definitely better and stronger cheeses I'd probably prefer. Um, I never liked Swiss as a kid, but I do now. Yeah, Swiss is a little weird. I like it, but it's it's not my favorite. I, I'll get it on a mushroom and Swiss burger because it's in the name. <laughs> and that's what about a ham and Swiss? Oh yeah, yeah. I guess I guess you do that too. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like I like cheeses. The the only cheese I can think of that I like that you don't like is blue cheese. Um, it's in the market salad at Chick Fil A that I get. Yeah, but do you, would you put it on like would you put it all over burger? Um, I have. Would you dip French fries in it? No. No, not that. I, I don't like blue cheese sauce. Okay. Well, I mean, it, then you've changed a lot because when we were dating, that was one thing that I liked that you didn't like as far as cheeses went. Yeah. But now you'll eat it. Mm-hmm. People change. Taste change. Your palate gets opened up to new things, and every once, like, uh, we just had, <laughs> I'm dating the content. We just had Thanksgiving, and um, the, uh, every year I try pumpkin pie, and I, I'm not to the point yet where I want an entire piece, but every year I've gotten to the point now where it's like, I can see why people like that. This year's pie was particularly good. Because you did it a lot differently. Yeah, I did. With uh, dark, dark brown sugar. Dark brown sugar and extra spices. Those vlogs are coming. I'm working. I know. I, I know. It's it's always very disheartening to see that everything is as behind as it as it is. But uh, if you've watched Steven plays, you might have noticed that we're changing some content up to make things a little easier, so we can actually get stuff out on Steven vlog. Um, that's why things have been weird over there, and that's why things have been so far behind over here. But we're working towards it. The channel's not canceled or anything, so just try and stay patient, and there will be more vlogs coming your way soon. Anyway, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have a question that you would like to ask us, leave it in the comments. Do it. Just write it down there. If you want to check to see if your question's been asked before, there's a link in the description box that you can click, and it'll show you all the questions we've ever been asked. Uh, if you if you don't mind, try to ask questions that haven't been asked in like the last year. Because that's not. Because we are answered them. Yeah. That's that's the reason for that. Especially things that wouldn't change. Yeah, that's pretty obvious, but people know how it works. All right, thanks for watching. See you guys next month. Hopefully it'll be soon. It'll be fast. It'll be a fast month fast. Of, of vlog releases uh, for another Q&A.